All right, from the Silver Bed News 24 Studios straight to Rhythm FM Studio downstairs, where we are going to catch up with, as I said earlier, the legend that paid a visit to us, and we had to chat about JJ, the Chosen One series, 13 it is, that was actually released to inspire kids, especially the Austin 11 that we saw, how it all happened. You know, for JJ, um, JJ you could always say he's not just a legend in Nigeria, in Africa, but is a global legend when you talk about football. There's no way you talk about football, the history, and our own Austin Azuka JJ Okocha will not come up. Let's take you straight to our studios, Rhythm 93.7 FM, to see how it all went down today. Big masquerade in the studio, and finally, we've got him. If you know someone that loves to wear that jersey number 10, you know what I'm talking about. Career-wise, we saw him play for Entrang Frank Frankfurt. We would always go back to that. I would know why. That fantastic goal is called. Are we talking about Fenerbahce? Are we talking about Paris Saint-Germain? That's PSG. Are we talking about when he now made at least his appearance in England? Bolton Wanderers, Hull City, and played 73 times for the Super Eagles. Scored 14 goals for the Super Eagles. He loved to score free, free kicks most times. Captain Fantastic. Talking about Austin Azuka JJ Okocha. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. All right, and then let's now look at this big one. First and foremost, you're soft spoken, man of few words, but very, very wise. <laughs> How did you go into becoming a pundit? Well, I, I had no choice. I think um, I got to the stage that I believe I have to share my football knowledge. Mm -hmm. you know, and the only way to do that since I don't want to be a coach, <laughs> is to go out there and uh, analyze matches. If he doesn't want to be a coach, if he was actually a coach, you would see lots of gray hair because that is not really an easy <laughs> task at all. But now let's look at um, JJ. There's something that happened recently that caught my attention. I've been on the neck. Let's bring JJ to the studio to share this experience with people. But as it is right now, I love how that JJ, the chosen one, tells your story through fun and creative um, form at the same time what is this chosen one all about well i think um it, it's all about my story mm -hmm. you know as an 11 year old austin mm -hmm. you know in uh, enugu and uh, that's the the side of me that people don't really know and uh, i feel so privileged to share with people, especially kids, mm -hmm. in animation form. Uh, and it, it, it's very educational. It's very, it's funny. It, it, it's a, it's a, a dream come true. All right, now we know you're not, you're not a superpower. You're not a superhero. But when it comes to football story, not just in Africa, but we're talking about the world, you are our own Superman. Now let's talk about this. Um, how do you think this will actually inspire the young kids out there? Well, I, I think uh, it will inspire kids out there because um, we all, as children, fantasize of, of, of being a, a superman or, or mm -hmm. superhero. And uh, uh, it's not even better to know that somebody that is still alive, you know, can tell his story and they, 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 to inspire them mm -hmm. and to bring that maybe that supernatural power that they've got in them, you know, because. Uh, I believe that nothing is in, it's impossible, and especially if you've gone through the ranks and if you um, started in a very humble way. So I, I think uh, there are a lot in there, you know, to inspire kids. All right, what does this actually mean? Having such a show, thirteen episodes, a series of this one. What does it actually mean um, to you as a person, living legend, sitting back to watch your story being told? It means the world to me, you know, because that's what we strive for, you know, to be able to be uh, a, an example, mm -hmm. you know, for, for the younger generation. You know, of course, it comes with a lot of hard work and dedication, you know. And, and by the way, uh, it comes out every Thursday. Now, describe JJ, the th chosen one, in three words. He's uh, a superhero. <laughs> He's a, a winner, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he's a kid that loves playing football. And with that, he brought joy to his school. All right, um, what's your favorite moment when you talk about a legendary football career? 
my greatest moment i think should be winning the olympics oh. you know because you only have one goal and uh, yeah, i was lucky to have had a uh, great players in, 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 in the squad, you know, which made my job a, a lot easier. Lowest moments in your in the world of football, your career? Lowest moment, I think, was not qualifying for the World Cup in 2006, yeah. you know, because that would have made it my fourth appearance, you know, and uh, I realized that my career was getting to an end, you know, <laughs> that that, that was it, you know, I wouldn't have the chance to play in a World Cup anymore. You played in Germany, you played in, in um, England, France, especially that big club PSG. You went to Qatar, you came back again to England. Let's talk about where you enjoyed your career most out of these countries you played. Well, I, I think um, I, I had um, a fantastic time wherever I played, you know. Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm very adventurous, you know, and uh, I think um, I get bored after maybe four or five years <laughs> playing in one uh -huh. league, you know. I always try to challenge myself. Uh, uh, the only regret I have is that maybe I went to England a bit late, you know. I should have gone earlier because um, what they were portraying out there then wasn't what Premier League uh, was all about. We mm -hmm. thought it was just... A straightforward kick and rush, you know. But then uh, the experience I had there was something else. So, yeah, but I, I I enjoyed every place that I played. You talked about England. You're not taking me back to England. Let's talk about this England because most times we see how players, no matter where they play, they want to come back that way. Someone like Joari, but not doing so badly with Rangers in Scottish Premier League, he came back. Look at even Paul Onochi coming back. What makes England special as a player? I think it's the best league now in the world, you know, uh, and, and I think what makes it special is um, the demand. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be on top of your game week in, week out. You, you, you can't drop uh, a gear <laughs> lower, you know, you have to be uh, ready every week because every game is, is so tough and physically it's very demanding as well. We are still sticking with England. Let's talk about Arsenal. After 19 years, they finally look like they are going to win the, this title. With, this, with the caliber of players in Man City, do you think they've got what it takes to hold on tight? Knowing fully well, there's a massive game coming up soon at the Etihad. Well, I have to ask. Are you Arsenal fan? 96 I used to be. <laughs> when we had our can. But right now, I ran off. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, it's, it's great to see mm -hmm. them up there. You know, I think uh, they've been very consistent this season. You know, uh, I think nobody thought that they are ready mm -hmm. to um, go on a, a very good run that they managed to put together and, of course, deservingly on top of the league. Uh, but um, they've got a final that is coming up <laughs> against uh, Man City. Well, that's my opinion. That's mm -hmm. how I say it because that game will be crucial for us now. If they can get a point or win that game, mm -hmm. I think it, it will help their confidence a, a, a great deal. So, yeah, for me, that's the match I'm looking forward to now for the rest of the season. Sticking with England, sticking with Man City, Erling Haaland, could we say he's now a legend? Looking at all the records he's broken in the Premier League, first season, and more to come. Well, not yet. Uh, I think uh, he's had a fantastic season. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think um, uh, we all can testify that it's so great playing in a, in a fantastic team, playing with great players, you know, because most of his goals have been tapping, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and uh, But don't, don't take anything away from him. He's a great striker. He's proven himself. And if he continues like this, I mean, who knows how many goals... He will score. He might even go on and break uh, Ronaldo or Pele's record, you know. But he's in a terrific form and uh, he's, a, he's a great player. Your top four prediction for the season? Ooh, that's, that's a tough one, putting me on the spot, <laughs> you know. Uh, I would say uh, Man City, Arsenal, uh, United, and uh, Newcastle. Okay, let me bring you back to Niger. Let's talk about how proud are you as an uncle to watch Alexi Wobi don that green, white, green jersey. 
I mean, it's it's uh, something to be proud of. You know, um, we all pray that our kids should be like us, especially when we excel in our profession. You know, and uh, I mean, I'm I'm so delighted. You know that he chose that part and that he's doing so well. So I'm I'm, I'm really a, a very proud uncle. All right, finally, how would you describe the current um, Super Eagles we have now? I'm not talking about players. I'm just talking about it as a team. As a team, we are not where we are supposed to be. I'm, I'm a diehard Super Eagles fan, so I, I think uh, sometimes I deserve to criticize them mm -hmm. if they're not doing mm -hmm. well, you know, because, uh, um, like the truth be told, uh, I think um, they are not consistent enough you know and um, the coach i think still have to prove himself because we are not convinced yet that he's um, the coach for us you know mm -hmm. uh, but i mean we'll give him every support that he needs to take us to the promised land okay i forgot to ask you the team you support in nigeria the team you support out there then what do you think about Victor Simon so far this season? I feel pain. Napoli crashed out on Tuesday night. Well, I mean, uh, I, I think um, he was um, uh, really missed in the first leg mm -hmm. of the uh, tie, you know, and I think that was where the match was lost, you know, because had it been that they got something in Milan, you know, they mm -hmm. would have uh, uh, gone to Napoli in, in better uh, form or confidence, I think, because defeat always affects your confidence. So, uh, but I, I think he's another one that is having a, a wonderful season. You know, we're all proud of him. Um, he's shown us his worth. You know, I, I think apart from Haaland, he's the next informed striker out there. Uh, and uh, I won't be surprised to see him playing next season in one of the biggest teams in the world. All right, don't forget, as I said earlier, JJ Okocha was part of that historic team that took or um, helped um, Hall, um, Hall City gain promotion for the first time to the EPL in 104 years. Don't you probably forget too, that we have seen him win um, some fantastic um, awards as an individual. Are we talking about the goal of the year in Germany? That was in 1993. Don't forget that dribble. Olivier Tan will never forget about that. I, each time I watch that, I'm always very, very happy. You've done so well, actually. And I want to say massive thank you to you and to all the young kids out there. If you want to make a career out of football, don't forget. Go and watch that 11-year-old Austin, the chosen one. That's a story of our own legend, what he did, not just in Nigeria, not just in Africa, but when you talk about the world of football. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.